Okay, welcome back or welcome to Scholastic News today. Um, you will be listening to a story about giant snake invasion. And I will go ahead and play that for you right now. Giant Snake Invasion Burmese pythons are eating their way through the Florida Everglades. Check out these videos. Come face to face with more animal invaders. Take the Constitution Challenge. Life Science Python Patrol Scientists recently caught the biggest Burmese python ever found in the U.S., but their work is far from over. As you read, think about How are Burmese pythons affecting the Everglades? Scientists had been tracking the male Burmese python for months. The huge snake, nicknamed Dion, slithered through the tall, thick grass of a forest near Everglades National Park in Florida. Experts hoped Dion would lead them to other pythons they could capture. Last December, Dion was spending a lot of time in a remote part of the forest. Wildlife biologist Ian Bartizak and his team from the Conservancy of Southwest Florida wanted to find out why. They used long knives, called machetes, to cut their way through tangled vines and thick brush. When they finally found Dion, they spotted a massive female python lurking in the bushes nearby. As the three researchers tried to catch the snake, she whipped her thick tail and tried to escape. After about 15 minutes of wrestling, she finally tired out. Next came the hardest part, carrying the 18-foot-long python to their truck. Back at their lab, the researchers put the giant snake on a scale and found that she weighed a whopping 215 pounds. The reptile is the largest Burmese python ever caught in Florida. But the snake's record-setting size isn't cause for celebration. For decades, Burmese pythons have been a threat to the Everglades ecosystem. That's because these snakes are an invasive species an animal or a plant that is introduced to an area and harms native species. Predator Problems Burmese pythons are native to Southeast Asia. They were first seen in the wild in Florida in 1979. Scientists think those pythons were pets that escaped or were released by their owners when they got too big. Adult Burmese pythons have few predators in the Everglades to keep their numbers in check, and they feast on nearly every animal, which has upset the food chain in the area. One study found that pythons have eaten 24 types of mammals, 47 types of birds, and even two species of reptiles. They kill by wrapping their bodies tightly around their prey until the victim's bones break. Then they swallow the animal whole. Stop these snakes! Lawmakers have tried to solve the Burmese python problem. Since 2012, it has been illegal to import the snakes into the U.S. Also, Florida has banned residents from keeping them as pets. Still, the python population in the wild is out of control. Experts say hundreds of thousands of them could be slithering through the Everglades today. Despite their size, pythons are difficult to find. Their scaly, spotted skin is perfect camouflage.
They may be hiding in some thick grass at your feet, and you'd never know they were there, says Bartizak. They're very good at staying out of sight. From 2017 to 2020, wildlife officials in Florida caught more than 5,000 pythons. The Conservancy of Southwest Florida focuses on capturing female snakes before they have a chance to lay eggs each season. One of the most successful methods is putting trackers in male pythons, like Dion. The trackers send out signals that help scientists follow the snake's locations and often lead them to large females. Bartizak says the chances of eliminating all Burmese pythons from the Everglades are slim, but he's not giving up. He is hopeful that scientists will develop new technology and methods that could help their efforts. It's not over till it's over. Bartizak says. What you need to know about the Everglades. Everglades National Park covers 1.5 million acres. That's bigger than a million football fields. Most of the park is wetlands covered in a tall grass-like plant called sawgrass. Native Americans who first lived in the area called it Paheoki which means grassy waters. European explorers later came up with the name Everglades. They combined the words forever and glade, which is a grassy open space. The park is known for its huge variety of wildlife. It's the only place in the U.S. where both alligators, below, and crocodiles live. History Makers Benjamin Franklin He helped create the documents that shaped our nation. Have you ever borrowed books from a public library, mailed a package at the post office, seen firefighters at work? If so, you have Benjamin Franklin to thank. He helped start each of these services in America. He was also a skilled inventor who created glasses called bifocals to help people see clearly and a stove to better heat homes. But Franklin's biggest achievement was helping to create the United States. A Curious Mind Franklin was born in Boston, Massachusetts in 1706. At the time, Massachusetts was one of the American colonies controlled by Great Britain. Franklin, who had 16 siblings, went to school for only two years. He left at age 10 to work in his father's shop, making candles. But that didn't stop him from learning. He was a curious kid and read hundreds of books. When he was 12, Franklin went to work in his brother's printing shop. There, he learned about printing newspapers and began writing articles. In 1723, at age 17, Franklin moved to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Making His Mark In 1729, Franklin bought a newspaper, the Pennsylvania Gazette. It soon became one of the most well-respected papers in Pennsylvania. Over the next decades, Franklin worked to improve life in Philadelphia. He started a free public school and the first hospital in the colonies. Franklin also loved figuring out how things worked. In a famous experiment in 1752, he tied a metal key to a kite string and flew it in a storm. Electricity from lightning traveled down the string and struck the key. Franklin had proved that lightning is a kind of electricity. He used what he learned about electricity to invent the lightning rod, a metal pole that is attached to buildings. The rod draws lightning away from the building and keeps it from causing a fire. 
creating a nation. Like many colonists, Franklin wanted to break free from Britain. The first battles of the American Revolution were fought in 1775. The following year, Thomas Jefferson wrote a draft of the Declaration of Independence. Franklin was part of a small group who edited the document, which announced that the colonies were free from British rule. Franklin played a key role during the Revolution, though not on the battlefield. Instead, he spent the war in France, where he convinced the French king to support the colonists in their fight for independence. After defeating the British, America's founders realized that their new country needed a strong government. In 1787, Franklin was one of the delegates from the states who met in Philadelphia to create the U.S. Constitution. This plan for how the U.S. government is run is still used today. Over the course of his life, Franklin worked his way from poor candlemaker to printer, writer, inventor, diplomat, and founding father. He died in 1790 at the age of 84. One of Franklin's many famous sayings was, Wish not so much to live long as to live well. Many people think he did both. Ben's Big Ideas Here are some important moments in Franklin's life. 1752 As his son watches, Franklin risks his life to fly a kite during a storm to prove that lightning is a form of electricity. 1776 In a secret meeting in Philadelphia, Franklin helps Thomas Jefferson write the Declaration of Independence. 1787 After nearly four months of debate, Franklin and other delegates sign the U.S. Constitution. U.S. History Never Forget Teacher Tara Crone will always remember September 11, 2001. On that morning, she stood in front of her fourth graders at Woolridge Elementary School in Virginia and learned the terrible news that the U.S. had been attacked. Two planes flown by terrorists, people who use violence to spread fear or gain power, crashed into the twin towers of the World Trade Center in New York City. Another plane hit the Pentagon the U.S. military headquarters in Arlington, Virginia. A fourth plane crashed in a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Passengers on that flight fought the terrorists and likely prevented an attack on either the White House or the U.S. Capitol. Nearly 3,000 people died as a result of the attacks. That includes more than 400 first responders. The sacrifice and heroism of that day is unmatched, says Crone, who shares the story of 9-11 with her students each year. She also works with the Freedom Flag Foundation. The group promotes the use of a special flag to honor all those affected by the 9-11 attacks. The foundation encourages displaying the Freedom Flag and discussing its meaning each September 11th. In 2018, Virginia passed a law making the flag an official symbol there. Lawmakers in several other states are considering doing the same. To help spread the word, the foundation sends a free kit to selected schools across the U.S. each year. The kit includes a freedom flag, a piece of steel from the World Trade Center, and a book written by Crone. Our goal is to make the freedom flag a national symbol of remembrance for 9-11, she says, so that future generations never forget. 9-11 Freedom Flag 
The blue background represents American unity after the attacks. The white star honors all who lived and died for freedom. Five white bars represent the Pentagon. Two broad red stripes represent the Twin Towers and those who died at the World Trade Center site. Three white stripes symbolize all the rescue workers who worked tirelessly on and after 9-11. The top and bottom red stripes honor all who died at the Pentagon and in Pennsylvania. Click here to learn more about the Freedom Flag and 9-11. Debate it! Should the school week be shorter? Some kids get the Monday morning blues after a fun weekend. But students in Lathrop, Missouri, don't have to worry about that. They only go to school from Tuesday through Friday. Lathrop is one of more than 500 districts across the United States that have four-day school weeks. Being closed for an extra day saves schools money on buses, electricity, and other building costs. School officials say it also gives teachers more time to prepare for the week ahead, which can help them feel less burned out. Public schools in Lathrop switched to a four-day school week in 2010. Chris Fine, the district superintendent, has seen many benefits. It gives kids another day to do homework and to be at home with family, he says. But some people argue that shortening the school week could hurt students. To make up for the lost day, many schools extend each of the other four days by up to 50 minutes. Critics say kids may lose focus during the longer days. Here's what two of our readers think. Yes. Zayden Jackson, Missouri. I go to school in Lathrop, so my school week has always been only four days. It makes for a longer school day, but that's not a problem. We put in our time in school and then get an extra day to refresh so we don't feel overworked or stressed out. This helps us take care of our mental health. Having a shorter school week also gives students more time to catch up on homework, spend time with friends and family, and participate in sports and other activities. This all makes us more well-rounded. No. Ava Rios, New York. A shorter school week usually means longer school days. That could be stressful for some kids. I know I would be more tired and less likely to concentrate during a longer school day. Also, teachers may give more homework to make up for the lessons they can't cram into only four days. A shorter school week would also put pressure on parents who work Monday through Friday. They would need to find childcare for their kids during the extra day off from school. That's an additional expense parents would have to deal with. Okay, hey, so celebrate Constitution Day. Each year we honor the Constitution on September 17th. <clears throat> excuse me, on that day in 1787, many of the nation's founders signed the signed the document. <coughs> excuse me. That set up the US government. Here are some key facts to help you celebrate. 39 number of delegates who signed the Constitution that includes US that included future US president George future US presidents George Washington and James Madison The Constitution created three branches or parts of the US government each branch can check the powers of the other two You have the executive branch which is headed by the president the legislative branch which is headed by Congress and the judicial branch 
which is headed by the Supreme Court. The document was written at a meeting called the Constitutional Convention. It took place in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And notice that this outline is the state of Pennsylvania. The Constitution set up the U.S. as a democratic republic. That's a form of government in which people choose the nation's leaders. A rare original copy of the U.S. of the Constitution sold last year for $43 million. Holy cats. How many years ago did the 39 delegates sign the Constitution? Well, if I go back up, it says on that day in 1787. So 1787, 1887, 1987. So it's over 200 years. Um, not 500, it's over 200. So if I do a math problem. Two hundred and thirty five years. Let's see if I'm right. Okay. The president is the head of which branch of the US government? Well, if I look up here, he's the head of the executive branch. Python Patrol, what is the main purpose of this article? Is it to describe how scientists in Florida captured a record setting Burmese Python? To persuade readers to adopt them as Python pets? to explain how pythons are hurting the Everglades ecosystem or to inform readers about what pythons eat. I think it was to explain how pythons are hurting the ecosystem. Yep. Which is an effect of the Burmese pythons being released in the wild of Florida? Burmese pythons are native to, the South, to Southeast Asia. That's not an effect of that. Experts say hundreds of thousands of them could be slithering through the Everglades. They kill by wrapping their bodies tightly around their prey or they're very good at staying out of sight. I don't know, let's see. B, yep. Which is the best definition of remote? Is it difficult to get to, filled with snakes found in the wild, studied by scientists? I think it's difficult to get to. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, history makers, Benjamin Franklin. Which event in Franklin's life happened last? He worked in his brother's printing shop. He helped edit the Declaration of Independence. He conducted an experiment with a kite that proved lightning as a type of electricity. Or he bought the Pennsylvania Gazette. Hmm. I don't know. Let me go back. Let's see. Let's see, in 1752, he risked his life flying a kite. 1776, um, he helped them write the Declaration of Independence. 1787, after nearly four months of debate, they signed the U.S. Constitution. So I'm assuming it's going to be the Constitution, because I know he worked for his brother... when he was 12. So it's gotta be the Constitution. I think it's gonna be B then, there you go. According to the article, Franklin started the first blank in the colonies. I think it was the first well, let's go back and look, because I'd rather check.
Oh, he started a free public school and the first hospital in the colonies. First hospital in the colonies. Which detail best explains what Franklin did as a diplomat? He was also a skilled inventor who created glasses called bifocals. That's not a diplomat. Franklin worked to improve life in Philadelphia. That's part of a diplomat's job. Franklin wanted to break free from Britain. That's not necessarily a diplomat's job. He spent the war in France where he convinced the French king to support the colonists. I think that's probably the best choice. Let's see. There we go. So your last part of the job is going to be to go to Google Classroom. I'm pulling mine up really quick, but it's not pulling up really quick. Um, there it goes. Now go to Google Classroom, and under Google Classroom, you are going to find, I'm moving it over so you can see. Still loading. So under Google Classroom, you're going to go into Miss Richardson's 2022-2023. You're going to go into Classwork. Under September, you're going to go into the Weekly Planner. And as soon as it loads, you will be able to take the quiz. Hang on a sec. So you're going to go down to Tuesday, you're going to go to Tuesday and under English Language Arts, you're going to click Scholastic News Quiz, which should pop up pretty soon. There you go. And then you can take the quiz. Uh, make sure that you put your own email in the email, your name, and then you can read and answer the questions. Make sure that you push submit when you're done. All right, we'll talk to you later.